Um, hi, it's so nice to see you. I feel like we've met before. It's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too. How are you, Katie? I'm great. I'm, oh, I'm great. The film is a joy. Thank you so much oh. for taking the time to, to chat with me. I really do appreciate it. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. And thank you so, so much for saying that. That's really sweet. Well, I, you know, I'm excited to talk about it. I mean, this, this feels like a really personal film. I mean, this is, and first of all, this is your first feature you've directed. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Now as, as your first feature, it's still like, I know we see at the end, the, the dedication, it feels like a very personal film. I, I was wondering why you wanted to tell the story. It certainly is a very personal film for me. Um, I have always been fascinated by families and obviously the film is about a family. Um, I was also really interested in exploring mental illness and how that sort of fractures a family and how it affects different family members in different ways. Um, I have struggled with my own mental health issues. Uh, it certainly runs in my family. You'll see the dedication at the end was to my grandmother who really was my hero, who, who bravely fought the stigma of mental health her whole life because she did not live in a society that, that had the understanding that we have today. Um, so there was a lot of reasons why this story personally appealed to me. Um, and those would be uh, some of them. And I also think to make your first feature, um, it's important to make one that feels personal. Yeah, yeah. It, it there, You know, when you do that, there's something that feels so honest about the film. Uh, even though it's it's not you, it, it it's not that it is you, but it's not you, if that makes any sense. There's a piece of you in it. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. I certainly brought a lot of myself to the film. And even as far as like how we had the the set design in the house and in the wardrobe and um i have said this in interviews before but i'm sober and so i gave finn a drinking problem because i thought you know i really know what that's like um so it's incredibly personal yeah absolutely um now uh you were you were playing both characters uh both yes. sisters um, I was wondering what the what challenges there were for that because this is I mean not only did you, did you direct the film you wrote the film now you're playing both of the lead characters and you do a wonderful job because they're very different people. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. I was definitely very nervous about that. It was important to me that they seemed like very different people. Mm -hmm. um, so technically, directing twins is a challenge. Sure. Um, so. It how I worked with a double, an amazing actress named Michaela Bursur. So when you see an over the shoulder shot, that's her shoulder and my, me in the, uh, behind her. Um, there was a lot of split screen. There was a few shots where we got to use what we called the orphan black camera, yes. where you see the twins sort of cross each other. And it was important to me to do that up, up top at the beginning of the film because I wanted to make it clear to the audience that we weren't just doing this in the cheapest way possible. Um, so there was certainly technical challenges as a director to make the twin stuff seamless and work. Um, and then as a performer, um, I had to be very certain on how I was going to differentiate the twins. And I had to be able to drop into both characters quite quickly because it's a Canadian film. It was a limited budget. Uh, we didn't, we shot it in 16 days. Um, so there was not a lot of time for me to find it on the day. I had to know exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Wow. You shot that in 16 days. Um, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we shot it in 16 days. We were the first production back after the COVID shutdown in Ontario, I think. So also there was a lot of new COVID rules and regulations, which take time out of your day. So there was, um, it was, it was a challenging film, certainly. For sure. Now, I mean, you mentioned too, working on a limited budget in Canadian film. I, I have to ask, I mean, was it tough to get the rights for Waterfalls? Because the song fits so beautifully at the end of the film. And I was like, Thank you. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> but I wondered if it Thank was, how, what that process was like. Um, we had an amazing musical supervisor named Michael Perlmutter, who is very well connected. So we went to him and I basically said like, I'll do anything, but I need to get this song. 
and I have a very limited budget. So I wrote um, a very passionate letter to TLC and <laughs> we came to them with the amount of money that we had, which was very limited. Um, and I was so lucky that they said yes with many caveats, which is you can use it for 30 seconds. You can't use it for the trailer. You can't use it over the credits. You can use this exact part of the song. Um, but I do, I did feel really, really lucky to get that song because it was all I could think about when I was cutting the film. I was like, I have to have this. I ha there's like, I have to have this song. Yeah. And it, it works well. It works well. It sort of ties everything together. Um, one of the things I thought was so striking about the film is there's this real tension, of course, of, of what it means to be together. And, and I was wondering from your perspective, you know, is there, is there still value in being together when things are, the pieces are so broken and they don't fit together the same way anymore? That's such a great question. Um, I think, yes, there is always still value in trying to be together, even when things are challenging or extremely dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. But I know um, certainly in my life, and there's been many different situations, whether that's familial or romantically, when you really have to take stock of how things are versus how you want them to be. And you need to look something in the eye and either call it or say, okay, we can make this work or I'm gonna evolve or we have to evolve. But I think that there's, I have found in my own life that people are better together. So I certainly think that there's value in trying to make things um, work, even if it has to work differently. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, I, I see that. And and with that in mind, you know, follow that up. One of the comments that keeps coming up um, is that I think it's towards Finn. It, Finn was the one that 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 came back. Am I right? I, that between the two yes. sisters, yes. Finn, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, they call her a coward because she ran away. They could, and they keep accusing her of running her away. I was wondering, with the use of that word, that, I mean, that's a big word, but I think from her, from her perspective, it was a question of health. So I was wondering uh, how you find that balance it, to, to separate yourself. Is that, can that be a healthy thing? Or is that something that, genu that genuinely, for some people, leads to so much hurt that, that cowardice is the word they use to describe it? It's such a, yeah, it's something that really I was interested in exploring in the film. And I also think what happens in family structures normally is if you have a mentally ill person in the family structure, there's one person who will be a caretaker and there's normally another family member that will run away and it will be, or it will be too difficult for. And I don't want to make running away or choosing to have your own life seem like a um, cowardly choice because I don't think it is. But I do think only one person in a family structure will bear the brunt of difficulties. Um, I wanted Finn's character to have to confront all that she left behind, because I think you can leave, but I think you have to confront what you've left behind. Yeah, uh, uh, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and as you said, the film has a lot to say about mental health. I mean, this is, and it's handled very, very well. I think, you know, a lot of films, uh, I mean, mental health is a big topic nowadays, I think we've seen, but but certainly not not many films uh, address it in a in a healthy way. Like they show the flaw, they show the hurt, but they also show some hope. I was wondering from your perspective, um, families that are dealing with mental health issues, what does hope look like in those situations to you? Again, another really great question. Um, I think that hope looks like finding the right treatment plan. That's certainly what hope looks like for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's also having empathy and compassion and understanding about what's actually going on with mm -hmm. the person that you love or with yourself. Um, and I think hope is just the desire to keep going and to be able to have hope like what's hopeful is that you can be hopeful for the future. You can believe that things can get better. Um, I don't know that they always can in every situation, but I have certainly found in my own life that I found a way to live and to sort of manage whatever I'm dealing with in a way that the future seems bright. I love that. Uh, the idea yeah. of hope itself being some form of hope, I think is so powerful. Um, yeah, thank you.
Yeah. Uh, well, for sure. And yeah. Uh, uh, Katie, I mean, as just just as we start to wrap up here, I'm just wondering, uh, what is it that you want audiences to take away from uh, "We're All in This Together"? I hope that they take away um, some compassion, empathy, and understanding for people who've made very difficult choices, mm -hmm. and I hope that there it can spark a conversation about mental health and how as families, whether we want to be or not, we are often in it together. So I hope people can look at their own family structure, maybe with some renewed empathy and, and a little bit of hope if possible. <laughs> There's that word again. No, um, yeah. absolutely. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Katie, thank you so much for your time and thank you for the film. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, thank you. This, uh, you. this was great. These questions were amazing. Thank you so, so much for having me. And I hope I see you in the flesh sometime soon. Absolutely. I hope so too. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye.